Streets were cleared, beaches closed, and a mandatory evacuation of low-lying areas was ordered by Governor Eddie Calvo after the tsunami warning was issued Friday afternoon following that 9.0 earthquake and tsunami that occurred off the coast of Sendai and Japan's Honshu Island. The decision that I'm making, I have to make because we have to be safe and we have to we can't take chances. We cannot take chances. The event began with the tsunami watch issued just after 4 p.m. Friday afternoon. That was quickly upgraded to a Pacific-wide warning following confirmation of a huge tsunami washing ashore on the northern Honshu coastline. The governor and representatives from the island's emergency services and government agencies gathered in the bunker of civil defense headquarters in Aganya Heights, where the island's emergency response plan went into effect. They're doing a, a variety of um, um, actually components to this response. Uh, we have agencies from the government of Guam, um, everyone from the public safety side to our critical infrastructure protection uh, to the communications side of the house from the private sector. And, and again, they're just fulfilling components of activity that's outlined in the Guam Emergency Response Plan and policies and procedures in our checklist with uh, our EOC. We don't want anyone in low-lying areas until the all clear has been given. Travel throughout the island should be avoided unless absolutely necessary. No other vehicles will be allowed, and police will be enforcing these restrictions. The arrival of the first wave was expected at 7.09 p.m., but that was pushed back. The event happened, the, even though the event was supposed to happen at 7.17, uh, we don't have the all clear yet. Um, we are waiting on the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center to give us that all clear. Anxiety rose within the civil defense bunker after reports came in that a wave buoy halfway between Japan and Guam had shown fluctuations of two and a half feet, and a two-foot surge in water levels was reported in Saipan. There were also several reports from witnesses at the Aganya Boat Basin who saw a sudden drop in the water level there of about two feet as well. One of the reasons the uh, Tsunami Warning Center wanted to, uh, to maintain us in a warning is those, uh, those uh, waves were not getting smaller. And so, uh, so for a while the waves were, uh, instead of getting smaller, were, were holding their own uh, in terms of amplitude. And we were starting to come out of the low tide and starting to go into a, uh, starting to move toward the high tide. Which Chip Guard is the warning coordinator at the National Weather Service. He was monitoring fluctuations in a tidal gauge off Pago Bay, which recorded at least six tsunami waves rolling past the island. We have a pressure gauge off of a uh, tidal gauge off of, uh, of uh, Pago Bay. And, and that did tell us that the water levels got up uh, uh, between a half a foot and a foot and a half uh, at various times. It also indicated that there was a very rapid uh, movement of water away from Pago Bay. Now, fortunately, uh, it didn't last such a long time. The, uh, the period seemed to be fairly short, maybe 10, 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, the water didn't go out a great distance and, uh, and then come back in. Uh, a great distance, but uh, so I think we were uh, we're fairly lucky. The uh, U.S. Coast Guard did issue a, uh, a request to uh, uh, sortie ships out of the harbor. Um, I have no information if the Navy moved any of those ships out. The Navy did not move its subs out of Apra Harbor, and two of them broke free of their mooring lines due to the tsunami waves. Said a release from the Navy. And in fact, we did get a tsunami wave uh, coming through Guam. It was bigger up in Saipan. Uh, we were fortunate that it came through at a low tide. And so uh, as the water rose, it rose up to what would normally be uh, like a high tide. So it didn't come on land, and, that, and we were uh, we're lucky the, for that. Kevin Kerrigan, PNC so, News. Uh,